and welcome to The One. My name is George and today I want to show you some of the inner workings of the DJI Mini 2. The Mini 2 is still a very popular drone, especially with beginners. Then there's the original Mini and the Mini SE, which will look almost identical inside. If you've never had a drone before, I highly recommend any one of those models to get you started. They have become somewhat more affordable and even used ones are plentiful on eBay and Marketplace. Like with all electronic devices, when you get a new one, you'll be offered an extended warranty or DJI Care Refresh. I've heard plenty of good things about the service, except that it's not free, of course. It'll depend on your philosophy whether you'll pay extra for some problem before you've ever encountered it. Are you afraid of crashing your drone to the tune of paying a whopping $80 extra for your Mini 2? It might be worth it, but it's just not what I do and it's not the most budget-friendly option, assuming you avoid crashing and abusing your drone. Well, in my case, this didn't work out as I hoped, and I crashed my drone. I, I, found, uh, I found the Mavis, but I think we got a big problem here. Yeah, the gimbal is torn right off. I think this is going to be um, a bit of a repair. Not happy with it. Not happy with myself. This was avoidable. I'm not sure if this would have qualified for a warranty claim either way, as it was definitely my fault. For about a day or two I was devastated. But then I discovered that the damage was definitely fixable and the parts were relatively cheap. Instead of sending the drone back to DJI, I decided to repair it on my own. I've recorded the entire process so I can share it with you. I'm not a professional and this was my first time ever attempting something like this. I have to warn you, the parts are tiny and they feel fragile. You'll need good lighting and probably a magnifying glass as well. Steady hands definitely help too. Here are some of the tools you will definitely need. 1. A small Phillips screwdriver. I believe it's number 0. 2. A pair of tweezers. 3. Selection of plastic prying tools and 4. A metal prying tool for where the plastic just won't work. Make sure you have all this on hand before you begin. I bought all of mine in an inexpensive set from Amazon. You can find the link in the description below. Now let's get right into it. A first look at the gimbal revealed that it wasn't broken but it was off the mount and the ribbon cable was torn. The first step is to locate and unscrew four screws that are at the bottom of the drone but hold the top cover. These are very tiny. You need a tiny Phillips screwdriver and be careful not to lose them. It can help if your screwdriver is magnetized those screws, like I said, they're really tiny. Make sure you have a small container ready so you won't lose them. Even after removing the screws, it's going to seem really hard to get that cover off. They're tiny little tabs and you're going to take a flat tool and just pry carefully all around. It's best to take your time and perhaps try several different tools. I struggled with this and it felt like I was going to break something. If you do, you can replace the cover easily enough. There's a link in the description, but you should be able to get it off without doing any damage at all, like I did here. Once the cover is off, we get our first look inside the drone and where this ribbon cable connects to. There's a kind of sensor at the side of the housing. You can pull that out with the tweezers. The cable is also connected to the GPS unit at the bottom. What you see me doing here is removing the GPS unit from the rubber mounts. 
I no longer recommend this way. You can actually unscrew the GPS and the MIU together as a unit. And it might be a little bit more work initially, but it'll be much easier to put it back because these rubber mounts, they are really difficult to get them back into position because they're so tiny and so soft. Here's a close up to show you the three screws. Now that you have easy access, take a plastic tool and pry off the connector carefully. The next connection we have to undo is at the bottom of the drone. And that means we have to undo the bottom cover. There are two screws at the bottom of the battery compartment and then we should be able to just pry it out. Under the bottom cover is a black heat sink and we have to remove that too. The screws are easily accessible. However, there's one that may have a sticker on it and it might say something like warranty void if removed. When this comes off, it reveals this blue stuff, which is heat sink compound. Be careful not to take that off. Otherwise replace it because drones like this one are prone to overheating. The sub 250 gram ones do not have a fan. You need to pry a little bit to get this connector off because it's probably glued on there. Now the ribbon cable is completely undone from the drone and we can remove it. The rest of it is connected to the gimbal and that's the next thing we have to undo. There's a bracket holding down the connector on the gimbal it's attached with two screws. We just have to undo them and then we can remove the connector as well. I'm using the tweezers here to remove this because it's just so small. The tweezers also work well to remove this connector, which is on there pretty firm. As for parts, all I needed was the ribbon cable itself and the rubber mounts for the gimbal. They definitely cost less than the DJI insurance plan, but as you've already noticed, the work takes time and might cause your hair to turn a shade closer to gray. On the positive side, you learn something really valuable. Now, let's put the drone back together. Start the assembly with the connector that connects at the bottom of the drone by first fishing it through the slot. This could be a little finicky, so be patient, take your time, and you'll get it through there. Once I had mine lined up, I found it easiest to push down on it with my finger Push on it firmly and make sure it's connected well. I did not replace the compound that held it on there before and it hasn't caused any problems in over two years. My thought on this is that perhaps this compound is there to prevent you from repairing your own drone rather than securing the connector. Now we can put the heat sink back in place. Make sure none of the heat sink compound came off and align it just perfectly. Then put back the three screws that you took out during removal. Next, put the bottom cover back on. This is plastic and it's kind of thin. It, it's gonna feel like really fragile, but once it snaps into place, everything's fine and you can put back the two screws inside the battery compartment. Now it's time to reconnect the GPS module to the ribbon cable. Again, this could be a little finicky because the parts are so small. Using your finger for this works well just because you can actually feel how it snaps into place. 
again, be patient, take your time, and make sure it's in there good. This step might look a little bit different if you took off the entire assembly with the frame. When I first did this, I did not do that. I took off the rubber mounts and I'm showing here what I had to do. It was really hard to get those rubber mounts back into position. What I ended up doing was pulling it with the tweezers after applying a tiny amount of soapy water to the rubber in order to kind of lubricate it to get it in there. And eventually it worked, but let me tell you, it was quite a struggle and I would not recommend it that way. I think my footage here brings the point across quite well. You can see me struggle with the tweezers, then I use a pin and yeah, it, it felt like I was never gonna get that in, but eventually it worked. Now let's have a look at what is left to do. You see that long part of the cable with the blue backings on there? There's glue on there that helps you keep the cable in place once you put this part back to the front of the housing. There's a sensor at the end. And the other one connects directly to the gimbal. You remember the bracket we took off? So that's what we have left to do. In my case, I also noticed that the rubber mounts that were holding the gimbal in place were not all there anymore. So I had to order a new set and then put that on as well. Thankfully, the gimbal was not broken. Next, route the long part of the cable with the sensor at the end in a way that it will not interfere with anything else and use the sticky parts to hold it to the housing. Carefully peel off those backings. Next, put the sensor back into its slot by using tweezers or perhaps even your fingers if you have tiny ones. Next, double check the routing of the cable just to make sure that it doesn't interfere with anything and it's firmly stuck to the inside of the housing where the sticky patches are. This should keep it securely out of the way of any moving parts of the gimbal. Now it's time to mount the gimbal. The rubber mounts that I ordered had some tabs on there that I could pull on with my tweezers, which made the job a whole lot easier. The first step though is to slide them onto the bracket on the gimbal itself. And it's kind of easy to do, but at the same time with them being so small, be patient. Once you got all four of them on there, you just line them up where they belong, then take your tweezers and pull on the tab until they snap into place. If it doesn't go smoothly right away, you could take a toothpick and apply some tiny little amount of soapy water to it, and then perhaps even push it from the outside with your flat tool while you're pulling with your tweezers but I found this part to be quite easy compared to what I had already accomplished. Once the two back ones are in place, the front ones are quite easy to do. You have access through the top
Now with the gimbal in place, it's time to put back the last connector which connects to it. Remember I showed you there's a bracket that holds it in place once it's on there. Once again, it's a little finicky to get that on, especially since the gimbal is suspended on rubber mounts and you kind of have to hold it and then take your other finger, line it up, push it down. Last step inside the drone, we put back that little bracket that goes across this connector, which also has a, a place for the other cable that connects to the camera that snaps right in there to keep it in place. Now here's one last look at what this should look like. I think we're 90% there. We can put the cover back and hopefully this thing is gonna fly and film and everything's gonna work just fine once again. To put the cover back, we have to spread the arms because otherwise they'll be in the way and then we'll line up the cover. Once again, this may feel like this should fit a whole lot better but pay attention to those little tabs and they'll snap in. Once you got those in place, there are exactly four screws that you have to put back from the bottom and then you're done. Let's hope this works. Since this repair, my Mini 2 has flown perfectly for over two years and it continues to do so. It has seen two more crashes that were much more gentle and didn't cause any serious damage, except for a few broken propellers. The drone was also lost for a few days after losing connection while I was in an inflatable raft on the river. Yikes. I've taken the Mini 2 to Mexico twice because you're allowed to fly sub 250 gram drones there as a foreigner. I can't recommend this drone enough. While you can have more and better features today, the Mini 2 is still worth it today. I hope some of my footage confirms this. In the future, I'd really like to make more videos like this. There are always broken drones like the Mini 3 or the Mavic series on eBay, but I'm finding that they are ridiculously overpriced in most cases. Shipping to Canada from the country with the most broken drones is also complicated and costly. Let me try this. If you have a crashed Mini 3, Mini 3 Pro or Mini 4, I am interested in taking it off your hands. Leave me a comment with your price and I'll consider it and we'll talk. Donations are especially appreciated and I'm more than willing to cover the shipping costs. Other ways of supporting my channel are buy me a coffee, link below, or use any of the affiliate links below to purchase things. Like this video and subscribe. Hey, and watch another video like the one on the screen right now. And I'll see you there.